Good morning. This is going to be talking about your physics library, part two. Your physics library is anything you want to make of it, all right? Now, uh, I gave a talk, it was really off the top of my head, on the books that I had. You don't need those books, you can get your own books, right? Let's have a look at something. There's a Clint Eastwood movie, which is a very good movie. It's called The Grand Torino. And Clint Eastwood is he's getting on in years and he's mentoring some young boy. And the young boy uh, wants to become a, a craftsman of some sort, maybe a mechanic, maybe a construction worker, or whatever. And he goes in and has a look at Clint Eastwood's tool shed, right? His collection of tools. And he says, how could I ever get all those, acquire all those tools? And Clint Eastwood says, you cannot. These are tools acquired by me over a lifetime. The same is true for my library of books. I didn't even show you half of them. And half of them, most of them I don't even look at. So you acquire those things over a lifetime, but you don't need them, right? At all. So, the Grand Torino messages, those are books acquired over a lifetime. Now, if you're at high school, a standard text seems to be Giancoli. Some people even use that at elementary college level as well, first year. It's still a good, it's a good book. Try not to buy these books new. They change the orders of the problems, the publishers I mean, but it's still the same book. And the oldest version is always the best. The older version is smaller as the book grows in years, it grows in width too. It, Distilled version of anything is what you want to get. I keep saying this. A good book to look at, I saw advertised on the web, is Basic Physics, Carl Kuhn. Nine dollars advertised on the web right now. Okay? That looks like an excellent little book. Sears Zelensky is a standard college text. Big, thick thing with CD-ROMs and everything and uh, workbooks and all that stuff. I can't stand it. Forget it. I didn't even give it a star. I mentioned this one, Sarway and Jewett, that's, for, that's good enough for two years at college just because I taught out of it, actually, and it's very logically written. You don't need all of it, but you, you know, some chapters out of it. How you judge a book, by the way, is very quick. You open the back cover and you check to see, does he list the important constants? And if he leaves out one, let's say, uh, Max, let's say Boltzmann's constant, if it's missing, that's a symptom, right? I, I, te I check books very, very quickly. I have something in my head, I wonder if they, cover, if they cover that little aspect of it, and I check that one thing, and if they don't cover it, bang, it's in the garbage, right? I have a few little tests. Won't, I won't discuss those right now. So you don't really need all of those books, and you can distill things down. For electromagnetic theory, you get a good introduction right in here. Very good introduction in here, in electromagnetism. The classical electrodynamics I talked about uh, by Jackson, this is a graduate level text. That would be a lot of work to go through that. And even at graduate level, you only need the first three chapters. The rest is almost redundant for modern research, okay? Just as a reference. Um, I actually worked through a lot of it though, myself. I haven't, haven't, haven't said that. Quantum field theory by Ryder. You don't have to do that one. There is uh, a very excellent introduction, which I think is even better than it. Quantum field theory demystified. It's actually better to learn out of than this book. That's only about $15. You get it, $25, you get it in Barnes & Noble. Excellent book. Now I mentioned Gassiarovich. I once again have it simply because that's what I learned out of, right? But I didn't learn all the book. I learned about the first 10 chapters. And then after that, you're getting into applications and, you know, uh, gets very complicated. Work your way up to angular momentum. That's all you need out of that. But wait a minute, you don't need to spend all the money on this one either. Because one of the best introductions to quantum mechanics ever written, believe it or not, very well written, is quantum physics for dummies. And there's another one, Quantum Physics Demystified, the same thing. Excellent books, how much? Around $20 or something, not at all expensive. You don't need those things.
You don't need the really expensive ones. I just happen to have them. Uh, I have a lot of other things. Theoretical Mechanics um, is, is an expensive little book, but there are, once again, many books that are good for mechanics. I just happen to have this one because it came from Birkbeck College. I keep meaning to give it back to them. Birkbeck College, University of London. They, they own this one. I have to give it back to them. I don't mean to. So, you don't get, need all the chapters either. You need selected problems from each of the chapters. And unless you want to go into the Lagrangian dynamics, you don't have to go into it in a big way. That's towards the end. If you follow my lectures, all right, you'll get a pretty good grounding in all of what you need out of this book and all the others. For the Feynman lectures, the Feynman lectures cover everything because one of the one of the books is a lot of electromagnetism in it, and another one is all quantum mechanics. For the general physics. Volume one is all you need, and you need to, this is a reference. You cannot really learn well out of the Feynman lectures. You might learn your physics out of Sarawai and Jewett, or whatever other one that you have, such as basic physics by Carl Kuhn. You might be learning out of that. You will only use Feynman to enhance what you've learned, because you can't learn from Feynman, really, OK? All right? But Feynman gives you in-depth insights, and he doesn't, uh, does not make it easy. I have many books. There's a series of books called the Landau and Lifshitz series in theoretical physics. Here's one, the classical theory of fields. The other one I mentioned was classical mechanics. It's virtually impossible to learn out of these books. You can do it, but rather than, let's say, take a year to learn uh, field theory from some other book, spend five years learning it out of Landau and Lifshitz, and then you don't get the big picture, because they mix in general relativity and classical mechanics, sorry, uh, electromagnetism and everything in here, in the one volume. So that's what I'm saying. You don't need all the books that I mentioned. You make your own collection, and you collect them over a lifetime to establish your library, right? Uh, now, here's another thing. If you have a computer and you're online, you don't need any books. All you go to do is <coughs> you Google lectures on whatever it is, let's say thermodynamics, and you go PDF, and you'll find lots of universities have put their lectures on online, okay? And you can have a look at the PDF version of the lectures. They're all excellent. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on books at all. If you have a computer, you've got access to everything. Um, for example, I have uh, Tuft's lectures on black holes that I got from the computer and I just printed them out, they're only about that thick. Sean Carroll's Introduction to General Relativity, Lecture li lectures on the web, they're only about that thick. Perfect introduction to general relativity. Actually, Tuft's Introduction to General Relativity that you can get on the web for free cannot be beat. Right? Cannot be beaten by the fancy big books that I mentioned. What else can I tell you? <clears throat> well, that's about it. What I'm trying to say is this. You don't need that. That's, that library that I have in physics, it's much more extensive. I haven't shown it to you. I've got uh, hundreds of books. It's just my library. Once again, acquired over a lifetime. And there, as a reference, I didn't plow through all those books. Uh, I wouldn't have the patience. I'm dyslexic anyway. All right, so that's it. Somebody asked me to clarify this. Um, unless that's it, I've clarified it. Okay, now there are other standard graduate texts, and uh, I didn't go into them. There's a standard text in classical mechanics, and I can't remember what it was. Uh, gosh, I'll do the graduate texts as a separate lecture. That's all I wanted to say on this, and I'll leave it for now. Once again, you don't need all that stuff. It happened to be my library. All right.